Russia and Ukraine conducted a second major exchange of prisoners of war in two days on Saturday, while Russian officials threatened an uncontrolled escalation of war as Western leaders discussed whether to allow Kyiv to use their weapons for strikes deep into Russian territory. Diane Tao from Reuters reports. Russia and Ukraine conducted a major exchange of prisoners on Saturday, 206 people in total, in their second such swap in two days, officials said. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said that all 103 Ukrainians returned were from the military. Russia's defense ministry also released video of its returned servicemen on a bus. According to the ministry's statement, its 103 soldiers had been taken prisoner in Russia's Kursk region, where Ukrainian forces captured territory early August in their first major incursion into the country. The ministry also said the prisoner swap came after mediation by the United Arab Emirates. Diane Tao from Reuters. Iran on Saturday launched a research satellite into orbit with a rocket built by the Revolutionary Guards, state media reported. AP correspondent Rika Ann Garcia has the story. Iran hailed the launch as a success, marking the second time this particular rocket has successfully placed a satellite into orbit. The launch comes as heightened tensions grip the wider Middle East over the ongoing Israel-Hamas war in the Gaza Strip, during which Tehran launched an unprecedented direct missile and drone attack on Israel. Meanwhile, Iran continues enriching uranium to levels close to weapons grade, sparking concerns among arms control experts about the direction of Tehran's nuclear program. I'm Rika and Garcia. For pictures, video stories, and more, follow the Voice of America on X, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. And for additional stories, visit voanews.com. This is VOA News. Funerals are held in Georgia for a teen and a teacher killed in a high school shooting. AP correspondent Julie Walker reports. <laughs> Family and friends gather at Hamilton Mill Memorial Chapel in Georgia for teacher Christina Iremia's funeral Saturday. The 53-year-old, one of two teachers and two students, killed at Appalachie High School on September 4th. 14-year-old Mason Skirmerhorn was also remembered at a memorial service Saturday at a civic center. Services were already held for teacher Richard Aspinwall, and a funeral will be held Friday for student Christian Angulo. His schoolmate, Colt Gray, who is 14, is charged with their murders. His father charged with supplying the weapon. I'm Julie Walker. Nigeria's army says that troops have rescued 13 hostages who were kidnapped by an extremist group in the northwestern state of Kaduna. The army said in a statement Saturday that the troops successfully overwhelmed the terrorists. The military said that several kidnappers were killed and others captured. It didn't specify what armed group the kidnappers belonged to. The rescued hostages were taken to a military facility for a medical assessment before being reunited with their families. Weapons, ammunition, solar panels, and cash were also discovered during the rescue operation. The family of Olympic athlete Rebecca Cheptegei blamed the police for failing to prevent the attack that ended her life in what they say is yet another case of elite female runners murdered by their partners. Reuters correspondent Zachary Goldman reports. Olympic marathon runner Rebecca Cheptegei's killing so soon after the athlete had competed for her native Uganda in the Paris Olympics this past summer shocked the world. But it also sheds light on the dark side of success for female athletes in Kenya's patriarchal society. Police say a former boyfriend named Dixon Diema Marangach ambushed her in her home on September 1st. They say he attacked her sister with a machete, then doused Cheptegei with gasoline and set her on fire. Cheptegei died four days later. Rebecca's father, Joseph Cheptegei, told Reuters Rebecca ended the relationship relationship with Marangach in January. He alleged Marangach beat her up, broke her phone, and sent men to try to intimidate her into handing over her land. Her father said that at least three times this year, Cheptegei had reported her ex-boyfriend to police, and he blames inaction for his daughter's death. Zachary Goldman from Reuters. The presidential campaign season in Tunisia is officially underway a day after protesters took their anger to the streets of their capital. The campaign season began on Saturday. Demonstrators on Friday decried what they say is the deteriorating state of the, of the their country. It appeared to be the largest protest since authorities began a months long wave of arrests earlier this year. Hundreds of Tunisians marched peacefully and called for an end to what they call a police state. The protest capped off a week in which the North, Af North African country's largest opposition party, Anada, said its senior members had been arrested en masse.
Thank you for watching. Can you do me a favor? Please leave a comment in the comment section below. That would really help. Thank you and see you again soon.